Vertebral Body Stanty – the new minimally invasive surgical treatment for vertebral fractures. Kyphoplasty used to be an established procedure for the treatment of stable vertebral body fractures in the past. Stentoplasty with a synthesis vertebral body stenting system is a new method which can be applied alternatively. We would like to outline the case of an 81 year old female patient suffering from a lumbar vertebral fracture in L3. Preoperative imaging shows a fracture of the vertebral body L3. L1 has already been successfully treated with balloon kyphoplasty a few months earlier. On the MRI scanning, T2 stir sequence, the freshly fractured L3 is clearly visible. Intraoperative view of the vertebral body L3. Under C arm control, the eyes of the bilateral pedicles are being marked on the patient's skin. The 3D animation shows the function of the system. First, the inflation system needs to be filled up with a mixture of saline solution and contrast medium. Be careful that no air is in the system. Starting procedure with a K-wire transpedicular. Insertion of the blue working cannula together with side opening cannula and choker. The lateral state incision at the eyes of the pedicles opens the procedure. For the sake of simplicity, the excess instrument assembly consisting of three parts, working cannula, side opening cannula and choker is inserted in one step. Under X-ray control, the excess instrument assembly is inserted transpedicularly into the fractured vertebral body. On the left side in a 10 o'clock and on the right side in a 2 o'clock position. The position of the instrument is being checked under AP and side view in X-ray. It's important to invert the instruments far enough into the vertebral body so that the outer excess cannula is securely positioned inside the vertebral body behind the posterior wall of the vertebra. The animation now shows further steps of the procedure. After positioning of the excess cannula, the excess channel for the stents need to be prepared. Therefore, first the drill and second the blunt plunger is used. The procedure must be done under radiographic control to avoid penetration of the instruments through the anterior cortical vertebral rim. The animation shows the function of the spinal application of standing, which is well known from the percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty. By inflation of the VBS balloon catheters, the stents are deployed by simultaneously restoring the vertebral body height and reducing the spinal kyphosis. Deflation and removing the balloons. A cement injection instrument is inserted inside the vertebral body stent. By turning of the instruments, the cement flow can be oriented, offering a safe and predictable filling with PMMA bone cement. The main advantage of the stentoplasty procedure 
is that with the VDS stand, the height gain of the balloon inflation can be maintained, whereas with kyphoplasty alone, it is well known that in many cases, significant height loss occurs during balloon deflation. Here you can see the situation in the operation theater. Preparation of the excess channel to avoid that the instruments will be advanced beyond the interior cortical rim of the vertebral body. Now the vertebral body stands, which are already pre-crimped on the balloon catheters, are inserted and positioned in the medial third of the vertebra, approximately 2 to 3 mm under the vertebral end plate, in order to be able to lift the affected end plate by inflating the VBS stand. After the stands are being positioned correctly, the balloon catheters are inflated. Here it is important not to over excess 30 bar pressure. As the deployment of the stand starts and the high restoration of the fractured vertebra needs to be monitored under fluoroscopic control in the lateral view. As soon as the vertebral body stands have reached their optimal expansion ratio, the balloon catheters are being deflated again and removed from the reconstructed vertebra. The stands remain in Z2. As the vertebral body stands are not designed to be standalone implants, they need to be filled with PMMA bone cement. A further innovative development is a site opening cement injection cannula, which is meant for a safer cement injection. The injection opening can be closed and opened again by turning the inner sleeve against the outer sleeve. With this instrument, a safer and more controlled cement injection is possible, as you can also orient the cement flow. The cement injection needs to be constantly monitored under lateral and AP fluoroscopic control. Unappropriated cement leakage can be avoided. The injection cannula are positioned centrally inside the stands and under constant lateral and AP X-ray control, the stands are filled with PMMA bone cement to increase the stability of the whole construction. Afterwards, the injection cannula are removed. The final AP and lateral X-ray show a good and significant restoration of the vertebral body height. The skin suture is being done with biodegradable suture and infiltration of local anesthesia as final surgical steps. The skin incisions are not much bigger than 0.5 cm. In the post-operative x-ray you can see the situation after kyphoplasty in L1 and after vertebral body stand in L3. In the last 12 months we have successfully treated 75 patients with this new method. In all cases we were able to achieve a good and significant height restoration and pain relief.